South Lake Union. It's one of the most beautiful days in Seattle. Look at this, just absolutely gorgeous. We got some nice bike paths that go up the west side, which is that way. But the there is a way around the east side, but you kind of have to go through neighborhoods and stuff. But this is an absolutely beautiful day today. But for those that don't know, that's the uh, Woodboat Foundation over there, Museum of History. It's a lovely, lovely place. So we're gonna take off. We're not really sure what's gonna happen today. I do want to head up to the University of Washington up there and check out, see if the cherry trees are in bloom. Other than that, really no plans. So let's go have fun. For those, so for those who are familiar with Amsterdam, they have the walkways and the bikeways and the roadways. And uh, it, all, it all works out quite well up there. In the, I guess in the 1950s, when the cars start to become popular, a lot of people were getting hurt by the cars and the whole city kind of rose up and they restructured the entire uh, city of Amsterdam for uh, bicycles. And so basically they've become the foundation. Let me make sure the cars are good. So they became the foundation of the world as far as bicycle paths. I'm sure they're not the only ones, but they're always known for their bicycle paths. And the only problem that I see with the bicycle paths, which is quite dangerous at times, is when I show up in the neighborhood, so I should be going from the walk path and I should be staying off the bicycle path. And, and you can always tell when I'm there in the past, everyone starts screaming at me. It's like, this guy must be a foreigner. Don't let him in our country. So anyways, it's a beautiful place. One of my most favorite places to go because Delta flies directly there from Seattle. And then from Amsterdam, you can pretty much go anywhere in the world. So it's a wonderful place to visit. So here we're coming into Fremont, it's beautiful. It's really grown since the dot-com era has hit. These were all a lot of just abandoned buildings down here. That's why they probably moved in there, just cheap. Now it's probably some of the highest rent in the area. Absolutely wonderful down here. Yeah, we used to come down here and uh, jump off the rope swing years ago that was some of the funnest things that we did didn't cost much money what well, we sure had fun laugh and laugh and i got one of those blow up air mattresses and the goal was always to see who could land on the air mattress and stay there <laughs> sounds easy but a lot of times it wasn't there you go. so we're down here now on the north side of Lake Union. Look at that boat. Oh, I love that boat. Man, it'd be a big hole in the water, but it'd sure be fun to live on it. So, this all used to be just industrial and shipping. A lot of it still, there's a dive tank there, one of the original dive tanks. Divers Institute of Technology. Pretty high paid people nowadays. So we're coming up here on the north side of Lake Union, a place called Gas Works Park. They used to uh, process some type of gas here, or fuels or something. And I think they consider, once they were all shut down and wasn't being used anymore, I think they considered what it would take to remove everything. And they go, let's just leave it all here and turn it into a park. This got a spectacular view, so 
I'm gonna go up to the top and we'll check it out. Go up the top of that hill right there and we're gonna check it out. Yeah, I don't wanna slow down, I don't wanna slow down, I don't wanna slow down till I burn. Isn't this amazing up here? It's a great viewpoint, that's why everyone comes up here. Some type of sundial. Huh. Uh, park it, check it out. So look at this, there's Seattle, like I said, it's usually not this beautiful. So there's the gasworks part that I think they just decided to leave all that equipment there. And then you got that part down there that Paul Allen has developed, that whole south side of the lake there. Still a lot of industrial areas. The houseboat that was uh, uh, sleepless in Seattle, still right down there. Has a nice sunrise. Got the bridges going into Fremont area. Into the north, it's a lot, a lot of residential. And over there is University of Washington. That's where we're heading. That, you see that big bridge in the distance. That is I-5. So, beautiful place. All right. So let's head on down here. Trying to hit the trail. Beautiful day. We got lots of miles to go. All right, let's see. How are fat tires, man? Just going to cut back to the main parking lot. Nice looking pup, man. Yeah. All right. So, right past the parking lot is a bike trail that a lot of people go from University of Washington down to Ballard. The traffic. All right. All right. So we're heading up to the quad, which is on the north side of the university campus. And the Japanese government, if I'm right, you could verify this. The Japanese government gave it to the University of Washington for some reason years ago. And so, let's see if they're still there. There's some cherry trees there but it's not the quad so anyways what happened was uh, they've come into full blossom and they're just beautiful and I may be late I may be a, a week late but I stumbled across the quad years ago when I worked up in this area I was just out for a walk and it was one of the most beautiful sights I'd ever seen so we're heading towards the north end of it right now. And I think the quad's up there in between those buildings. We're gonna quickly find out. Yes, yes it is. Let's see, so I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna go up here and then make a left into the quad. Let's see if I'm right. 
Okay. Let's see if I'm right. That's the thing about being an entrepreneur. You give yourself the right to be wrong. Because if you have to be right all the time, there's no room for error. Just stick to having the job. It's a lot less painful. Okay, where are we here? Ha. Huh. I'm close. I think I'm close. I think, I think, I think I'm close. Aren't these gorgeous? So I don't know how long these have been here, probably at least 50 years. I'd Google it and check it out. Bistro Lounge. I had a friend of mine start a burger place here. Uh, he's a smart guy, he worked really, really hard, still didn't make it. That restaurant business, hard business, make it even if you're good at it. There's this one gentleman I worked for in one of these restaurants. And this, him and his couple, they always ask me to wait tables on them. I've done a lot of different things in my life. Just trying this and trying that. And, and I think the biggest thing, because I like my freedom, I want to be able to take it off and enjoy my freedom when I wanted to. Anyways, great guy. Him and his wife owned three restaurants. They owned a couple of the franchise restaurants and then they had their own restaurant. It was called Winners down in uh, Tukwila. And they always asked me to wait there on their table, which I love because they tip super, super well. Anyways, this couple decided to start a fourth restaurant. And the fourth restaurant they started, I mean, these guys are in the industry. They know what they're doing. They're not amateurs. And what happens? They fail. And I was astonished going, how can you know so much, be so successful, start another restaurant and fail? And you have three successful restaurants already, all within a close quadrant. And then another company bought it and came in after them and started another restaurant. Or I know it's actually a similar type of restaurant in the same location and succeeded. That stuff just didn't make sense to me. Maybe they had over leveraged themselves or I don't know what happened. But I was amazed on how tough the restaurant business can be, not including COVID, you know, because their net profit margin, I know a lot of business owners for restaurants, their net profit margin is minimal at best, minimal at best. So, okay, we're uh, heading back to where we were before. We're gonna make it right here. And we're gonna drop down to the bike trail. Oh, nice building. I like that color. And then we're going to drop down to the bike trail and then go past Lake, uh, sorry, then we're going to go past Gasworks Park and uh, see where we end up. Does anyone out there remember Casey Neistat on his boosted board? I love that boosted board. I thought it was such a great idea, especially in New York, if you survived. And I thought to myself, ah, man, I ought to get one. Well, I called up boosted board and shooting the breeze with one of the gals in the tech department. And uh, she goes, how old are you? I said, I'm uh, past 50. She goes, don't get it. She goes, well, well, she asked first, she goes, have you rode a uh, uh, skateboard before? I said, no. She goes, don't get it. 
Actually, it was very good advice. I probably would bang myself up pretty bad. But what was interesting is that the boosted board company went out of business. I couldn't believe that because, you know, they're massive sales. Massive sales. Hey, man. Good to see you. Oh, you're riding free, huh? All right. So we're heading across Ballard Bridge. And see what I mean about not wanting to ride on the road with that stud foundation there? It's just too dangerous. It's a little bit narrow, but you just take your time. I talked to a uh, young gentleman bought this really nice like $4,500 skateboard and he had traveled 40 miles from Aaron Ballard over to Kirkland and uh, I don't know the brand of his but I was really impressed with it. Look, we got a gentleman coming up here. I'll finish the story. All right. Thank you! Thank you! Okay, so anyways, the guy was on his skateboard and he didn't have a full face helmet back there and he hit one of these uh you know holes or something totally wiped himself out because he had uh, ended up in surgery it took him quite a while to recover and afterwards he got himself a full face helmet he's a married man with a kid and so you know he's a lot more to lose than the average single person I like the skateboard that had like eight inch wheels. I thought, wow, that'd be really easy to get travel to if you drive to the city. The only challenge for me is I can't take a, can't take the hit anymore. I'm gonna pull over for these guys. All right. Day. Well, there's Fisherman's Wharf. Still even see the people out there drying their nets. This net shed, I mean literally nets. That's what they store their nets in uh, off sea. To Man, I sure appreciate fishermen. I really do. That's a hard way to make a living. But it's an independent way, you know? If you're strong enough and you're healthy enough. I went out to the Aleutian chain once for a little while to see what it was like. Because I got sick and tired of my gal I was working with. Her, her brother was just a total drunk. I mean, not a drinker total drunk and he come back with like a hundred and fifty thousand dollars cash after taxes and I want to do something and I said to myself I could never save a hundred and fifty thousand dollars doing what I'm doing so I went up there to check it out see what it was like and I did it scared the crap out of me what happens that those people they work so hard and they had lost three ships while I was up there. Ships like these, not small ones. Three ships, whole crew died. And I got scared, that's the bottom line. I got scared, I said, it doesn't matter how much money you got, if you're dead, you can't really spend it. Isn't that cool? Okay guys, show us how it's done. A nice lunch down here. This little cafe, it's a nice cafe here. It's been here forever. A nice little lunch. Gonna ride over to the backside here. And the Uncruise Adventures. I'm gonna check into that. See what that's all about. Oh, they got four ships. So they must be doing something right. The Uncruise. I had a nice lunch down here, it was wonderful. I'm gonna be heading back early today. 
haven't really put on that many miles, but I had a big week this week. So I'm gonna go home, rest up a bit. Just grateful I got out, got a chance to see those cherry blossoms. So guys, I'm just gonna let you watch the video and I'm gonna call it a day. Thanks for watching. Hey, they're gonna open up the bridge, it looks like. Let's see if they're gonna see it. Whoa. All right. So we're gonna open up the bridge for you, man. Let's check this out. Let's check this out. <laughs> 